Good evening and welcome to the 8th Annual Aging Together 5 Over 50 Celebration. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Lisa Peacock and I'm the Director of Culpeper Human Services and Chair of the Board of Directors of Aging Together. Aging Together connects people to communities and to resources to improve quality of life as we age. We are grateful to Johnny Krawchuk and Culpeper Media for all they do to make this event possible. This, this event is always scheduled to take place in May to align with the Older Americans Month. Last year, due to the pandemic, the event was moved to September, but now we are back on track. Older Americans Month celebrates the contributions older adults make to the community. This year, the theme for Older Americans Month is Strength in Community. I think we have all seen great examples of resilience and strength during this past year. Tonight, we celebrate five individuals, one from each of our five counties of Culpeper, Fauquier, Orange, Madison, and Rappahannock, who have made a real difference in, in their communities, who have exemplified strength, and who have given themselves, given of themselves to make the world a better place. I will now turn the program over to our Executive Director, Ellen Phipps, who is live in the Culpeper Media Studios with board member Crystal Hale, who's the Director of Orange County Department of Social Services. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello, thank you. Thank you, Lisa, and welcome everybody. Welcome to the Five Over 50. We're so thrilled that you're here. And we do apologize for the technical delay um, in getting started. And uh, at the same time, we just couldn't do it without our wonderful sponsors, uh, Culpepper Media and all the work that they do. Um, Johnny and Nicole just do a fabulous job. So. We're really grateful to them and really to all of our sponsors. Thank you. We are grateful to all of you who sent in a tribute, um, tributes to the honorees, and uh, we're very thankful that you took the time to do that. We're very grateful for that. Well, what a year it's been, right? It has been unprecedented. And like many organizations, Aging Together had to pivot and change and respond to this new world. And this is a great example of how we had to pivot and change. Um, this event, normally a live banquet, which many of you have attended in past years, has had to go to this virtual platform. But I have to say, I've been looking at the silver linings in some of uh, the things that we had to change. And you know, one of the great things about going virtual was that we've been able to reach so many more people. And so that was exciting. The other really wonderful thing is that in filming the event, we got to join the film crew and visit each county to hear from each introducer and each honoree in their own environment. And that was really special to see them in some cases in their in their own homes so that was really a very um, a, a, like a bonus that we would not have had otherwise there is an official program for tonight there is an official program you can download that program by visiting agingtogether.org and on our home page download the program you can print it out it's beautiful it has lots of good information in there but speaking of programs, we have a great show for you tonight. Just a fantastic program with some extraordinary human beings. I am so excited. Um, I finally just want to introduce my co good colleague in the studio with me tonight is Crystal Hale. She is our board member for Aging Together, and she is the director of the Orange County Department of Social Services, and I'm just thrilled that she's able to join me tonight. Crystal, over to you. Well, thank you, Ellen, and it's so wonderful to be here, and such a wonderful opportunity to celebrate people who are doing amazing work in our community. And it's just really amazing, as you said, with all of the changes we've been through over the last year, how Aging Together is still able to come together and um, help make a lot of things happen. But we can't do that without awesome folks in our communities. And tonight, we're gonna be able to recognize some very special people who have made uh, 
huge contribu contributions to our community. But first, we would like to um, recognize some of our sponsors, and we're so grateful to our five over 50 sponsors who helped tonight happen. Um, help make tonight happen. And at the five-star level, we have Culpepper Media with Jonathan Krawchuk and his staff uh, really stepping up to the plate, as always, to help make sure that this event goes off without a hitch. And it just wouldn't happen without them. We would give them 10 stars if we could. Um, and then after at the three-star level, we have Culpepper Star Exponent, Orange County DSS, which you know I'm fond of, <laughs> and Rappahannock Rapidan Community Services. At the two-star level, we have AARP Virginia, Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield, Sharon Accardo, Culpepper Human Services, Lake of the Woods Lions Club Foundation, Rappahannock Pantry, and Skyline Cap. I would like to remind everyone that Aging Together uh, provides an opportunity for you tonight to support our organization. And please consider making a donation in honor of the awardees tonight or in honor of uh, support of our programs or just to make a kind contribution to help us keep our programs moving forward. The people we're celebrating tonight are selfless human beings, Ellen, yeah. as you know. Yeah. And they continue to give selflessly to their communities. And in doing so, they make our world a better place. These individuals are living examples of remarkable contributions that older adults can make. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear from our award uh, recipients. The program will begin with the honoree from Culpepper, Mr. Frank Basio. And here to introduce Frank is Sue Hansen. Hi, my name is Sue Hansen, and I have the greatest pleasure to introduce the recipient of the Culpepper 5 Over 50 Award today. I have known this person for 20 years, and he continues to amaze me with his commitment to those things that he believes in. Frank is the type of person that after you've met him for five minutes, you feel like you've known him forever. He is just one of the good guys. Even as he managed the county, he found time to devote to the young people of our community. He has been a member of the Career Partners since 2002, and during that time, he mentored high school students as they prepared for competing in E-squared. This program it prepares students to create a product or service, then figure out how to market it, finance it, and then they go before a group of business people and they decide who the winner is. He was involved with the STEM program, which serves all of Culpeper's fifth graders and he inspires with forward thinking, go-get attitude, and his initiatives that have led to lasting results for our young people. He grew up with general aviation, and he was in the Navy for 27 years as an aviator, and wanted to give back something that has provided him with so much opportunity and fun. As a longtime member of the Young Eagles program, which flies kids between the ages of eight and 18, an introductory ride in a small plane, Frank has introduced many kids to the magic of flight. He also started an annual Culpeper Air Fest, which has celebrated 20 years in 2020, and we have had over thousands of people attend the Air Fest. He was a founding member of the New Pathways Tech, which trains students of all ages in CNC machining. He's a member of the Service Academy Board who recommends students to the Navy, any of the services, and he has success in some of our students going to the Merchant Marines and other academies. He's also a member of the American Association of Airport Executives. He's a humble man, but he does have a sense of humor. I can remember a few years ago when one of our disgruntled farmers dropped a cow off, a dead cow, in the parking lot. Well, when a reporter called from D.C. and asked Frank thinking that he was going to get an angry response, what he thought of having this dead cow in the parking lot, Frank just sort of casually said, well, you know, in Culpeper, some of our citizens pay their taxes with money and other pays with beef. So that really diffused the whole situation. But that's who he is. He has done so many things, it's hard to put it all on a piece of paper. But the bottom line is Frank is a very special guy. He enjoys what he does. His uh, passion, I think, is for helping young people understand about the education they can get and the training that's available. And I think we're just really blessed to have him in our community. 
So that being said, I'd like to introduce Frank Basio. My name's Frank Basio, and uh, you know I've had a couple of careers. One of them is, uh, I think, as Sue mentioned, that uh, I was in the Navy for 27 years, uh, and. Um, Got the pleasure to fly many great airplanes, the F-14 Tomcat amongst them. Uh, got the pleasure to fly with the Israeli Air Force, one of the few people who's had that opportunity. And for a little kid who was born and raised in Morgantown, uh, it's an amazing thing. And I think only in this country do you get those kinds of opportunities. So that's kind of that's kind of who I was then. Uh, after I retired from the Navy. Uh, I came here, started as the airport manager, somehow made a huge mistake and ended up as the county administrator. But I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, Culpeper is a very special place to me still in my heart, always will be, uh, because of the people and what the people do and how they act and what they're all about. I, I think that Culpeper is different and special in that in Culpeper, if you're new here, um, you'll get to know pretty quickly that if you need something, all you have to do is ask, whether it's through your church or whether it's through your social organization or any other way. You know, if you need help, someone will be there to help you. There's a way to figure it out. And, and I love that about Culpepper. Culpepper takes care of itself. In 1983, when my wonderful wife and I were dating, she said one day, you know, you'll, you're, you're going to have to, we're getting serious, so you're going to have to go to Culpeper and meet my relatives. And I said, where the is Culpeper? <laughs> we ended up coming here, and we spent a few days, and, and I, I just loved it. I mean, I thought it was the most wonderful thing in the world. So I said to my, I said to my brother-in-law, I said, is there an airport around here? And he said, yeah, but it's way on the other side of town. That's a Culpeper thing. If you got to go more than five feet, it's way on the other side of town. So I said, well, can, can you take me there? I said, well, go in my car. He goes, yeah, yeah. So I went out there. And when I stood on the tarmac and looked around at that airport, for some reason, this feeling came over me. And I said to, to my brother-in-law and my, and my wife, and my, yeah, my, my fiance at the time, I said, you know, this is a really special airport and a really special place. I said, this can be made into something absolutely wonderful. Never gave it a second thought. I watched Culpeper grow basically from its heart, which is the town, uh, you know, and, and, and just, just grow uh, in many ways, including, you know, being able to, co to uh, attract uh, uh, major businesses. My intent when I came, when I came here was, you know, hey, I'm going to retire, and every morning I'll go down to the little old country airport, and, you know, and run that, and we'll, we'll have a good time, you know. And then things developed, and, and I was asked to, uh, you know, to uh, take it on as a person who would be there in the interim, right? Then, as it worked out, I think the Board of Supervisors liked what I did and asked me to be the county administrator, and that was that. It's not, it's not necessarily my achievement, but I think one of the biggest things that happened, and, and you have to give credit to the Board of Supervisors, the Town Council, everybody that was involved in it, was the water and sewer agreement. Because I think that was the start of cooperation, better cooperation between the town and county, and that led to all this explosive, wonderful things that have happened in Culpeper. Uh, but that was a deal that was hard it was hard for everybody who was involved in it. Uh, there were lots of things that needed to be talked about, lots of things that needed to be settled. And you had to settle it in a way that everybody got most of what they wanted, but no one got everything. So when, that's how you know when you have a good business deal. If everybody walks away just a little bit dissatisfied, you've got, you've got a good deal. One of the major things that I'm interested in that, I, that drives me is I want to see young people have opportunities to have quality education. And I want that quality education to include hands-on training where they understand how things work. What I've mostly um, concentrated on is new pathways. New pathways um, is, a, 
is an in my heart kind of thing because it's hands on for computer numerically controlled machinists to learn how to do that. And that's anywhere from seniors in high school to whatever age you want to be. So people get to understand exactly what it's like uh, working in an operation that, that you might get hired to work in. I think mostly what I tell young people is success in life, success in business, success in your own relationship. All of that has to do with, with fundamentally two things. It's building relationships and knowing what the right question to ask is. And I think the second thing is, Carl Sagan had a saying that said, um, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. So basically, you know, he said that from a, from a perspective of looking out in space and not seeing the planet or whatever that he wanted to see, but that didn't mean it wasn't there according to him. So that translates to everyone's daily life is don't let what you know uh, impair what you might know if you go look, because a lot of people have paradigms and they don't look. They go, well, you know, I've done this for 20 years, I've done this for 10 years, you know. Don't let that stop you. Be always inquisitive. So don't, don't let those things stop you from learning new things. You know, I'm, I'm just humbled by being given this award. I don't know what else to say. Do you still feel young? Yeah, <laughs> I do. You want to go do some push-ups? <laughs> wow, what a guy. That, he's just amazing. I was so honored to be able to um, go out to his home to, uh, with the film crew to present the award to him. And oh my goodness, his, his, uh, his home is is just incredible it's like from civil war time civil war structures on the property it's like a museum and uh, just really fantastic um, and and just such a joy to to go out there and see this this beautiful place and and the uh, the vistas from from there as well but um, I love that advice you know to be inquisitive you know I, I think that's something that we can all Try to remember, it's easy to get stuck in our ways. But congratulations, Frank. Uh, awesome job. Yes, Ellen, and I know you must enjoy going out there and being in the environment of our honorees tonight. That's really, really neat. What an opportunity to really get yeah. to know them even better yeah. on their turf, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved also what Frank said about um, building relationships and how important that is. And he gave so much great advice in his presentation just now so yeah what a great guy yes yeah congratulations again Frank and don't forget to comment on Facebook and show your support by visiting agingtogether.org and make a donation well it's time to move on to Madison County and we're going to hear from Dink Kreis and here to introduce Dink is Peggy Hobbs of Skyline Drive, one of, Skyline Drive, no, Skyline Cab. <laughs> Did you catch that one on, on live TV there? Okay, good. <laughs> Peggy's one of our very own Aging Together team members uh, for Madison County team, and we're grateful to Peggy, and over to Peggy to introduce Dink. I'm Peggy Hobbs. I am the marketing manager at Skyline CAP, the Community Action Partnership in Madison County. Community Action um, makes a promise to the people we serve that we will change lives and that we will improve our communities. And our mission at Skyline CAP is to help people and change lives. And I feel like Dink embodies that spirit in everything she does when she's working with Skyline CAP, but also when she's out in the community working with the many other organizations and activities she's involved in. As I was working on her nomination, I started asking some questions and, and the, the answers kept flooding in. She's involved in so many different things, all with the idea of helping other people 
and improving their lives. I believe that Dink is viewed as someone that can be depended upon to help out whenever there is a need. She's always there. She is dependable and uh, is just always thinking about others without any, any consideration for what it means to her other than the fact that it gives her joy to, to help others in the community and to make Madison County a better place to live. Before COVID, you could go out in the community at any number of events and you'd always find Dink there advocating for various organizations, whether it was Skyline Cap or Rural Madison or Mesa. She's always there advocating for the organization that she believes in and, and helping get the word out uh, to others to help recruit other people to, to, to get involved in those organizations. I've always found Dink to be that person who is not afraid to speak up when, when something needs to be said. I've never ever heard her say no to anything that was asked of her. She's always there, she shows up when she's supposed to, and she helps out, she gets involved. She's not a passive member of any of the organizations that she's involved in. She is a very active member and, and she does the work of the organization, advocates for them, and is um, always there when there is a need. It is my honor to introduce Dink Kreis as Madison County's five over 50 honoree. Dink Christ, uh, my real name is Delano, but nobody knows that. <laughs> I've been Dink all my life. Um, I born and raised in Denver. Uh, got to Madison by way of Canada and Texas. Uh, and I came here because my cousin offered me a, a house. And at that time, my kids were gone. By, I was a widow. and it, was a, a new corner of my life to start out. So that that's great. how I got here. I find Madison County people to be very generous with their time and with their money. Um, we have, I don't know how many 501c3s we have in Madison County, but a lot. And we're a small county, so everybody is kind of picking at the same wallet and people just keep giving and giving and giving. They're just, they're really wonderful here about that. I think my career, if you will, in volunteering began in Texas. But what I didn't understand until I got involved was what therapy writing does for the writer. It's amazing, you see absolutely amazing changes in children um, from the point of not being able to walk to being able to walk. Wow. It's thrilling. And of course I got to play with horses so that was wonderful That's fun. Perfect. And so I did that for many many years and then when I moved here I found a therapy writing. Um, it was Elaine, uh, Elaine Fitzgerald at Horses Are Healers out of Charlottesville. And I volunteered with her, but it's but it got me um, thinking about other people and, and how I can help. And being a widow and my children both grown, um, and of course it's a wonderful way to meet people. Um, so how I got involved with Skyline Camp was kind of interesting. I was I had a meeting with several people. Uh, who were concerned about the housing in Madison. And then all of a sudden there was an opportunity to join Skyline Cap, which is very involved in, in affordable housing. Uh, but I was given that opportunity to learn that. 
And the added bonus, of course, was Head Start. <laughs> it is pre-kindergarten uh, for three and four-year-olds um, at risk or underserved. But it also involves the parents, which in that con the condition is really important. You really need the, the parents' uh, backing yeah. to keep those kids. And they're adorable. They're tiny and they're adorable <laughs> and sweet. Yeah, yeah, and it's fun. We get to go uh, every year to, for the vision training uh, through the Lions Club. So, uh, and that's, that's wonderful. And we've found quite a few kids who need correction yeah. and uh, can only improve their lives. Yeah, Where do you get your inspiration from? I think from my aunt, <coughs> uh, who, who said always, well, my career is in volunteering because I can't do anything else. Wow. <laughs> she felt like she didn't have any talent except for volunteering. There's some work you've been involved with that you're most proud of. Oh gosh. Um, I think perhaps the um, Education Foundation. Uh, that started out, strangely enough, uh, because another friend of mine, two friends, and I were little concerned about the food in the schools oh, yeah. and that just kind of evolved into the Education Foundation. Well we give grants to teachers for special programs, scholarships, um, there's a Camp Unikite in the summer at Graves Lodge that we contribute to and it's just all about getting the best education possible for our Madison students. Yeah, be aware of what's going on in your community and take part in it. Be involved, uh, be aware of the problems and the challenges and uh, celebrate the, the successes. Why do you think that's important for young people to do that? Because you, young people, and, and we all, I'm sure, have done it, you're busy growing your family and uh, building your house and you sort of don't look around as much as you might. And I think if you're more aware of what's going on in the community, you do a much better job of taking care of your own family. Uh, well, with, with Rural Madison, um, which was founded by a, a man named Khalil Hassan, who's, um, who is a farmer and an organ organic <clears throat> farmer. And we've worked um, to try to teach people to farm organically without chemicals. Yeah. That's, that's the primary, primary focus of rural medicine. That's wonderful. Yeah. So and he, in turn, he had, he uh, built a uh, community garden <clears throat> oh. and gives a great deal of the produce to Mesa. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's all connected. It's all connected. It really is. We, we are all connected in one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm absolutely honored and astonished because I know a lot of people who do more than I do. Uh, I'm slowing down, you know, in my old age. But it's an absolute honor, and I, I'm thrilled and grateful. It keeps me going, keeps, keeps me young, yeah, quote unquote. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, like Franklin Delano? Yeah. How did you get Dink? That's what I was going to ask you. How did oh. you get. How did you get that nickname? Well, when my parents brought me home from the hospital, my brother said, that's a dinky baby. <laughs> this is true. So, as I say, from, from birth, I've been dinky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> D 
think I love it. Oh my goodness, that was such a great story. We had such a great time talking with Dink out at Prince Michelle Winery in Madison County. It just beautiful. We had a beautiful day, and uh, what a delightful person. Um, my goodness, uh, you know she. If she's slowing down, I want to slow down to her speed. Oh my gosh, that's, I mean, that's um, amazing where she gets her energy, uh, just endless energy, it seems like. And I just love how she is, again, you know, just the strength of community. That's the theme, right? This is Older Americans Month. The theme is about strength in communities and Wow, I mean, it's because of people like her that make our communities stronger. And congratulations, Dink, just fantastic. We, uh, it was just such a joy to, to talk with you out there, really great. And that therapy riding, gosh, that, that, that's an incredible program too, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness, well please remember to leave a comment on the Facebook page and show your support by visiting agingtogether.org. Feel free to make a donation. Perhaps you've heard of the iPads for Seniors program. You can make a donation specifically to the iPads for Seniors program. And there's something else I wanted to just mention briefly tonight. I've got this hot off the press, our Regional Resource Guide for Older Adults. This is the first ever resource guide for older adults in our regions. It's about 90 pages. It's translated into Spanish. And this is something that came out of the pandemic. You know, so many people were isolated and not connected to the internet. So how do we get people connected to vital resources? How do we do that? So we came up with this guide. We've got 5,000 of them hot off the press, and we'll be distributing them around to our five counties. And we're grateful to the PATH Foundation for their support of this and to all the advertisers who advertised in this. So this is the kind of work that we're doing at Aging Together. And this is how we're working through the pandemic to meet the needs and preferences of older adults. So, next on the agenda tonight. You know, Ellen, I'll just add before we move to the next uh, piece yeah. of the, the yeah. um, program. One thing that Dink said that I thought was so profound was to be aware and involved in your community and to be aware of the needs that are out there. And there are so many needs in our communities right now, and I believe that Aging Together gives an awesome opportunity for anyone looking to be involved to become involved, especially involved with a population that needs more support now than ever. And that can be through a donation to Aging Together or to become involved with the, with the organization itself. So I just thought I'd add that because Dink really uh, made a profound point when she said to be involved with your community. That's great. Yeah, that's really true, Crystal. But without further ado, I would like to introduce someone who's near and dear to my heart, Ms. Donalda Lovelace. Donalda used to be on the Orange County Board of Social Services. Oh. When I first came on board as a director, Donalda offered me great advice, kind encouragement, and a little bit of guidance at the same time. So I'm just truly, truly um, just so excited to be able to introduce Donalda Lovelace tonight as an awardee for uh, the Five Over 50. And to introduce Donalda is Mary Jane Atwater. I'm Mary Jane Atwater, and I have the great pleasure to introduce Donalda Mosby Lovelace as Aging Together's Five Over 50 awardee from Orange County. I've worked with Donalda um, on the board of Lowlink. Um, an organization at Lake of the Woods that enables seniors to remain in their homes with services from volunteers. And it's been so apparent that Donalda has a real empathy and compassion for older adults and also for the most vulnerable. Now service is second nature to Donalda and after Moving to Lake of the Woods, she joined the Lake of the Woods Lioness Club. Her talents were quickly recognized. She rose through the ranks of the officers, and in 2017 and 2018, she became president. She was instrumental in 
the club's work to find fundraising support for the Orange County Safe House. And Donalda helped us put together a toolkit to help older adults navigate the healthcare system and healthcare appointments. And she also was the leader or led the, uh, the effort to establish the Orange County Toy Box, which provides toys for children at the holidays. There's so many other ways that Donalda has contributed to our community, both at Lake of the Woods and Orange County. And remember, she's only lived here for 11 years. She was a six year member of the, representing the Orange County of the Rappahannock Rapidan Community Services Board. And she also served on the boards of the Orange County Department of Social Services and ARC of North Central Virginia, which also includes Orange County. Closer to home at the Lake of the Woods, she's been a member of the Visual Arts Council, the Environmental Control Committee, the Pools Committee, and she remains involved with the Lions organization uh, in both the regional and the state levels. She truly has a relationship focus in her life. She is described as a ton of energy, a dedicated mentor, totally amazing, an innovative leader, and witty and charming. Another way that Donalda is described as is forthright and with no hidden agenda. What you see is what you get. Her friend Bea Kemp says she's also funny as all get out. There's no mincing words with Donalda. And when you're feeling low, Donalda has this great way of saying, come on girl, pick yourself up by your big girl britches and let's get going. Donalda is upbeat and she's positive. And that's even more remarkable given her, her, the last year of her life. Not only has there been the pandemic, but she lost her husband, George Lovelace, last March. And she has taken on the care of her parents, her mom who is 100 and her dad who is 95. And she still finds time for all of her community activities and also to make calls to residents in the area to set up their vaccinations. So it's not surprising that other organizations have recognized Donalda's many talents. And so before introducing her, I just want to close with a citation that she received when she received an award uh, from the, the DC ARC uh, in 1988. Donalda is a leader, a doer, a task-oriented pace setter who perceptively defines challenges and then simply gets the job done in her characteristically skillful manner. So Donalda, congratulations, and I'm thrilled to introduce you now. I was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but I grew up in San Diego, California. I call it God's country. Just beautiful. My aunt told me every good professional has to spend some time in Washington, D.C. So after graduate school, I came east, uh, you know, to make my mark. Luckily, I had been on some national uh, committees when I was in San Diego, so I knew people. I got a job almost immediately. Started with an ARC association, um, working with developmental dis people with developmental disabilities. And kind of stayed with the ARC for years, probably about 20, you know, years, and then went off to run my own organization in Mitchellville, Maryland. It was an organization serving individuals with developmental disabilities. We had recreation, we had transportation, we had residential, uh, we had supported employment, um, but residential was my thing. I guess about three years or so before I was going to retire, I knew I was going to retire, I decided to look around in terms of where we were going to live. Never heard of Lake of the Woods before. I read their newsletter, and it was like every club in the world was here. And, I, and it also gave me the impression that if, you, if there was something that was not here and you wanted to start it, you could, easily. I said to my husband, I, I said, George, why don't you go with me down to Lake of the Woods? Um, it's a gated community, and I'm going to have to get a realtor. And he fell in love with it that day. He told the realtor, I will um, 
have my house on the market, and I'll be back here next month. My husband, military man. <laughs> you know, so in a month, we were out of there, and uh, we had moved down. That was my introduction to Lake of the Woods, and it's, it's been marvelous. When I first got here, um, we, I had just finished building a building, and I thought ECC, you know, going over plans, working with engineers and so forth. Yes, I could do that. And it was fun, except for they didn't tell me that you had to go on a boat, and I can't handle boats you know, around the lake because you had to look at people's docks and how they kept, you know, oh my God. So I, I did fine with that except for the, the, the boat situation. And then I wanted to, to work with people with developmental disabilities. So I would be, I would go to the Rappahannock uh, Community Services uh, Board for their meetings. And they were open to the public, and I was the public for about two years. I was the only, so I could say anything I wanted. I could tell them all about ARC. I could comment. Oh, it was, it was wonderful. Uh, probably the executive director called our supervisor and said, can you find something for her to do, you know? So I got appointed to the Orange County uh, Department of Social Services Board. I was on the board for about three years, and then an opening came up at the Rappahannock. And by that time, not only was, you know, my first love was working with individuals with developmental disabilities, but my second love became aging. I, I saw some, some really horrible kinds of situations in the course of my career. Um, people that were living in dark basements, you know, no, no light, no whatever. And to be, able to, to be able to support them, to make them have a life, uh, to make them feel that this was their, their home, um, that, that to me was the most, most special kind of thing. I grew up with sitting around the dinner table and family talking about what they were doing. Uh, not only, well, I couldn't understand what my dad was a, a physicist. I couldn't understand. He couldn't come home and talk about work. I wouldn't have a clue. But he, they talked about their volunteer activities. And so that's where I just felt that that was what I was supposed to do. I have loved kind of everything that I have d involved myself in. I've just really loved it. You know, find your joy and um, find things that you can contribute to make your community better. And I think that's what I've tried to do. That's why Orange County, that's why North Central, um, uh, the North Central area. If you give, you get back. And um, that's... That's, it's, it's just been a good experience. I don't know exactly what else to say, really. I mean, when I heard that I was being considered, I said, whoa, <laughs> you know, excuse me. Um, but I think you have to care. I mean, whatever you, you, you have to care about something. You've got to be passionate, you know, about something. Um, I am humbled. I am very, very humble because I, I, I don't see myself in the same light as some of the other uh, previous honorees. But I'm, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep at it, you know. And and maybe down the road they'll say, oh yeah, she was, and she's worth it, you know, and so forth. But no, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to keep plugging. Uh, now you can, you can probably going to have to cut this off. But I owe it all to, you know, I mean, she can write up. She's doing my obituary, by the way, you know, so. <laughs> well, congratulations to Donalda, and what a wonderful person with what a great spirit. And one thing I've noticed uh, with all of our honorees tonight to include Donalda is the humbleness. None of them expected to be 
honored in this way, but yet they are all so deserving of it. And Donalda, she, I have seen her out in the community doing all sorts of wonderful things. And one thing she mentioned was to find your joy. And isn't that a powerful that. thought, just to I find your joy. I love that. Yeah. And to, it's true, like that, to find your joy and, and have that passion. And then the rest just follows, right? If you're doing something you love, you are making a difference because you're so passionate about it. And I loved how she got that role model around the dinner table yeah. as a child, right? Yeah. She's growing up and she's hearing about all this volunteer work. Yeah. And I think that's a really good lesson too to all of us, you know, parents and grandparents that if we're out there doing good work and volunteer work, we're sending a very strong message, message to our children about that. Absolutely, and, and thinking of it even personally, Ellen, that's how I learned, right? From yep. watching my adults in yep. my life, my parents giving to their communities. So I uh, just want to say again, congratulations to Donalda. And um, she also mentioned something, when you give, it gives back. I might not oh. be saying that exactly right, but she basically said, when you give, you receive back. And so that is another profound uh, yes. thought. And, yeah. um, that's something that you can do tonight for Aging Together. You can go to our website at agingtogether.org and make a donation to help us keep moving forward with our wonderful programs. And speaking of programs, um, if you haven't been able to participate in a caregiver program, we have some summer programs coming yes, up. Yes, we do. Yeah, I'm excited. We've got a new summer series for caregivers specifically kicking off in June. All the information is at our website at agingtogether.org under programs. You can look it up and then in the fall, we're really excited, we're going to be having a virtual conference, a, a caregivers conference in the fall. That's right. So we're really excited. A lot of, a lot of good stuff coming. You know, that's the thing I think when you're caregiving, it's so important to get that information and learn from others who are in a similar situation as you. It, these things don't necessarily come naturally, so these programs really fulfill a, an important niche in our community. Absolutely, and caregiving is one of the hardest jobs in the world, taking care of someone else. Yeah. And we just have to make sure folks are remembering to take good care of themselves as well. That's for and those sure. programs will help with that. Absolutely, that is really true. Well, next up, we have uh, our honoree from Fauquier County. And this is Liz Danielson. And here to introduce Liz is Pam Stilton. Um, it was around a time that I had tragically lost my, both my mother and my sister 13 weeks apart. Um, and then there were several other losses in a very short time after that. And all the planets just kind of aligned. Um, and here I am almost 10 years later, working as the scheduling coordinator and receptionist here at the center, working with our counselors, scheduling our counselors so that they can help um, the next me that there is out there. So it's, it's definitely a full circle event, yeah. You can tell when you talk to her as a professional that she has your back um, she's not making a judgment about you or what you might have gone through or experienced in life, decisions you made, bad or good. She just accepts you completely, which is very hard to find nowadays, even with friends and family. Um, at a time when I was losing literally all of my family, she was used in a great way by God to um, help me heal, grow, and push through some very, very dark times for sure. But she gave me tools and hope and um, just helped me have that hope to keep taking one day, one step forward, one day at a time. And here I am. I think she's um, an inspiration as a woman, as a business owner, 
um, as a child of God who listened to the dream that she had and had the support of an amazing husband and family. Um, it's, it's a center that's built on wanting to help someone and knowing that everyone here really loves everyone, what they're going through and their struggles. And we want to just be that friend that's there walking alongside them no matter what, what's going on. Um, it is now my great honor to introduce Chaplain Liz Danielson, the founder and director of Spiritual Care Support Ministries. Well, I'm Reverend Elizabeth Danielson. I'm a chaplain, a healthcare chaplain. And uh, I lived here in Fauquier County, Warrington uh, for 20 years. Um, came from uh, New Jersey. My husband was an engineer with ExxonMobil. And so Exxon and Mobil merged and here we came. We have three children and they were all married and lived somewhere else. But uh, we, love, we love being here. But there's a, there's a piece here uh, in Fauquier County that I haven't really seen um, anywhere else, except maybe Madison, <laughs> Virginia. <laughs> well, as a healthcare chaplain, I was working at uh, Newton Memorial Hospital, and also I was working for the Karen Ann Quinlan Hospice. And I had a really difficult day. Um, and the weeks before that, people were sharing with me that they had losses uh, loss of loved ones, different types of losses that they suppressed for years. But they shared how nobody really listens. Everybody tries to fix you. They always have, you know, want to make you someone else. And they want you like you were before the loss. But of course, we change. We're, we're never the same. So um, that night, well, that day, I had um, at least five or six losses between hospice and the hospital. And I came home and I was exhausted and uh, said to my husband, I'm going to bed. And so I said my prayers. I went on my knees and I said, dear God, there has to be a way where we can support people that have had loss, that we can educate them, give them power as they're educated and um, just have them know because chaplains are known for the ministry of presence. So how can we get this accomplished? So your will be done. So I went to bed and I had a dream. Um, I woke up that morning. I was shaking. You know, when you hear from God, when you really hear from God. And I said to my husband, I heard from God. He says, you need to go to your pastor. <laughs> so I called our pastor who's on our board, Pastor Dan Estudo, and asked him if he could see me just for a few minutes because he had a full schedule. He said, sure, Elizabeth, just come on in. And so I shared what I, what I dreamt about. And he simply said, I will pray for you. And if this is God's will, it will be completed. And so the reason why we have this building here is that I was uh, supporting someone, uh, Debbie and Coiner and her husband, um, Gray. And so after a few years, they came to me and they said that God had spoken to them and they wanted to build me a building because they heard about my dream. And of course, I did not believe them at all. I said, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so they showed me some buildings. We talked about it, but it wasn't the dream. And I knew that if I had not, if I didn't go by what the dream was all about and exactly what God had told me, it would die. So we just waited and then they came back and we met for dinner and the coiners said to me that they bought property, which is the property we're sitting on now, seven acres. And it was just amazing. It's a miracle, really. And we provide support, of course, from a faith-based perspective, support and education to those that are sick, chronically ill, those that are grieving loss of loved ones, those who, um, have any kind of personal loss. So there's a lot of loss going on and that's, that's what we do. So we have uh, counselors that will support people. Our services are free. So, and then the other thing we do is we do a lot of training in the community. 
I work a lot with faith communities, but I also work with the secular agencies and do a lot of training uh, because we need, we need to educate people. We really believe um, in hope. Um, there are so many people right now have such deep pain from um, loss and it's very hard on them and they if they don't understand the losses they're going through it it makes them fearful uh, many are angry uh, suppressed anger is you know goes right into depression um, so we're here to to meet them where they're at and to offer hope and support whatever that means and to show that we really care about them and everyone is called by god to be here this is not you know, they, they always tell me I was moved to come here. I, God told me to come here. And we have now almost 100 volunteers that help us. So to accomplish what we need to accomplish, um, we have uh, counselors, we have pastoral counselors, as well as lay counselors. We're not a licensed counseling center, but we are a very big part of the community. So we know where to send people. This is not just something that Chaplain Liz Danielson has done. We have had people, um, hundreds of people, be a part of this whole experience. And without them, this could have not been accomplished. For young people, I would say, be, learn to be good listeners so that you can really see what's in front of you. And if God gives you a dream, he's talking. You need to listen, because that's, that's what happened to me. Well, personally, and professionally. So personally, I'm so proud of being a wife uh, and having a marriage for 52 years and having three children that are healthy, that are serving the world today, all over the world. That to me is a great accomplishment personally. Professionally, to be able to be given a gift, to be given a vision, a gift from God, to to trust me to be able to know that there was more in me than i ever imagined when i put the key in the building at 76 west shirley avenue where we've been for 17 years i had no idea what i was doing i learned a lot in the hospital how to do business i learned a lot in hospice about people and they that was the hardest thing for me to give up was hospice but now we're getting hosp we're getting terminally ill pa people here because many of them don't understand hospice, so I'm able to speak to them about it. But of course, being able to do what God has called me to do with the help of many others has been a great accomplishment. But I am so honored. I, I'm really the happiest when I'm in the background. Um, and that's funny to say as a minister, because I've been preaching and teaching and going all over the world with my husband. But I just love to watch people heal I don't need that affirmation, you know, but when it happens, it's so meaningful for me. It just means like things are happening behind the scenes and I'm not even paying attention. And that's good, that's good. The greatest reward that I receive is when I see people heal. Um, I believe that there's, there's no such thing as no hope. I believe that there's hope for everything, but again, we need others to be able to support them in a way that they can receive that hope. What a great message, Liz. Thank you so much and congratulations. That message of hope, which is so important for people. I think so, so often people do tend to give up or they wanna give up, but if they have the right kind of support, like the kind that Liz and her team uh, provides. It's, it, it just can make all the difference in, in the world. And I just, I love how she talked about, um, you know, for younger people to listen. That's really good advice. Just, you know, listen. You can learn so much, you know, just by listening. Yes, Ellen, and what a testament to faith to hear Liz talk about um, her her patience and just saying, let his will be done. That really spoke to me. And you know, so often we fail to um, 
take the time to acknowledge the importance of our faith-based uh, supports and resources in our communities, and they're so very important. I just, I, that was really profound, and to hear Liz talk about her journey and just following her faith and being able to help others and talking about um, how she enjoys seeing people heal. Yeah. And healing is a lot about relationships, what Mr. Basio spoke of earlier. And yes. that's one thing Aging Together really helps with, develop those relationships so folks can help to heal, especially folks that may not otherwise have um, a whole lot of supports or relationships in their lives. Yeah, absolutely. And let me tell you, we, we had the opportunity to visit the center. That's where we were filming, out at the new center. And it's wow. beautiful. It's a, a beautiful facility. And uh, it's, um, you know, it's, it's just, uh, she's got a whole team there and lots of different support groups. And it's thriving. Wow. And she has also written a book. So people can also read, read her book. And she gave me a copy of her book. And, uh, um, yeah, so thank you, thank you, and congratulations to Liz, and thank you for helping so many people to heal. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, you know, we want to remind people to visit the website right. and make a donation if you can. No donation is too small. Um, so please visit the website, and while you're at the website, take a look around at some of those programs and resources that we've been talking about. Remember, we've got the resource guide that's available now. It will be available digitally very soon. Just for older adults in our region, we're really excited about that. Um, but also, when you're perusing the website, you might see something about how to become a dementia friend. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you visit the website, you can learn how in one hour you can become a dementia friend at one of our training sessions and learn, the, learn just a little bit awareness about dementia and how you can support someone in your community who might be experiencing dementia. Somebody you come across at the grocery store perhaps or the library. We all know how so many people will say, well, I saw somebody struggling at the grocery store, but I didn't really know how to react. Right. So we want people to visit the website to find all of this out. And that is at www.agingtogether.org. That is agingtogether.org. So please do visit that website. And now we are ready to move on to the last honoree, certainly last but not least, from Rappahannock County, and here to introduce Mimi Forbes is Danny Wilson. Uh, I'm Danny Wilson, and a uh, friend and neighbor of Mimi Forbes, and I've known Mimi, oh, it seems like a long time, but I think it's only been a decade. I think we met when I first started volunteering at the pantry, if I remember, which is about 10 years ago when the pantry started. So. Uh, Mimi's um, a unique person, and uh, she has incredible people skills and a big, big warm heart. And uh, that combined with her business experience, I think it was a no-brainer. And I, I assume it was the board who selected her, uh, and they did a fine job. There's something I want to say about, just about her character, and then there's a little story I'd like to, like to tell. Um, I'm always impressed and somewhat amazed and a little bit jealous uh, that Mimi has this ability to, to connect with just everyone. And she... She, we're both from Indiana, and so we've talked about maybe this is our, you know, our heritage, but people of, of whatever social strata, whatever income bracket, um, she, she tends to view them as people, and that is just insignificant when she's confronted with that person. And 
I've seen it over and over again that um, folks that may be a little bit ostracized for some reason or another by, by society um, are embraced by Mimi. And I think it's part of her, just a part of who she is, but I think it's part of her spiritual practice as well to have learned to be open. That's make, that makes her very successful. And the, the example I'd like to give is actually not connected to the food pantry recipients, but I guess more to a volunteer experience. Um, a number of years ago, seven, eight years ago, our grandson who was living, raised in France, was having, at the age of 12, having a very rough time uh, with life, with, with the world, to the point where we all decided it would be a good idea for him to come and stay with his grandparents um, for a little while, get away. And um, so he was here, spoke some English, but not too much, uh, and was would have been very happy sitting around with a computer or, or cell phone in his hand, um, which doesn't work so well out here. So. Um, one day I decided that he was coming with me to volunteer to the pantry. And Mimi knows a little French. And she also, with her kind and open heart, knew a little bit and saw that he was having trouble. And she just put him to work. And he loved it. And he improved his English. He w was finally doing something not for himself, but for others. And now he's 19. Whenever he comes to visit, the first thing he wants to do is go volunteer at the pantry. I think last Christmas, he brought his girlfriend with him and they went to the pantry. And um, it's just, to me, a prime example of how, how amazing Mimi is. Well, I'm Mimi Forbes, and this is my beautiful retreat, my home, my sanctuary. It's called Lilac Farm. I knew this was where I wanted to be, and I've been here for 20 years, and I've loved every minute of it. I want them to carry me out of here in a pine box <laughs> and actually bury me back over there in the corner, sprinkle my ashes. A local gentleman by the name of Hal Hunter was looking for a place, you, know, you all know how Hunter, um, he was looking for a place to bring vegetables uh, with a program that was called um, Plant a Row for the Hungry. And he wanted to do a, a community garden, but that doesn't make any sense in Rappahannock. Why would anybody go somewhere to plant a, a garden, a community garden, when they have gardens in their own yards? So he just got a whole list of people that promised they would plant an extra row for the hungry, but they had no place to take it. So it worked. It was very symbiotic, all this coming together at the same time. How looking for a place, there, were tar there was TARP money available through the, uh, the Community Action Committee, and um, they could set one up. And we found a little tiny place you would not believe we were there for like six or seven years maybe in a little tiny space that we were able to serve as many people as we do now i mean it was you remember oh yeah it was a little tiny space but we functioned very well in there for seven or eight years until we finally realized we do need a we need bigger space because we had we had a shed here a shed there we had uh, freezers at somebody else's house. We had part of another building. We had some stuff stored in there. It was just, we, had, we were all over the place. So when we had to move, we found a place. Unfortunately, it's not the perfect place. It's the perfect building, or pretty good. And, um, but it's way over on the west end of the county. And so for the last three years, um, it's been a, a bit of a hardship for some of the people in Chester Gap, in Boston, and Amosville to go all the way over there. So we're, we're working on a new building, and we're hoping that that's going to be coming online here pretty soon. And that will be in the town of Little Washington and will be much more centrally located. In fact, it's right around the corner from where we used to be. So it's really going to be like going home again. 
So that's how we got going. And we, um, after, when they started breaking down uh, the Fall Care Community Action Committee, we actually set up our own nonprofit. And through the help of people in the community, Betty Mahoney being one who just was very, very helpful. Um, and she was on, on the board for a long time. Oh, and I have to mention my board. My board has been from day one, they have been wonderful. There's only me and I have one assistant. Everybody else at the pantry is a volunteer. They give freely of their time. They're just amazing, my volunteers. I love every single one of them and I have no trouble telling them what to do, which is why they call me the saucy bossy pants. So I really, I, I, it's I, really a term of endearment. Yeah. <laughs> I even put it on, I even put it on my business card. I love that. <laughs> well, I've, I've been to your uh, award dinners and uh, honored the people that you have chosen in the past. And so I, I'm very proud to have been selected for this. There's also a little bit of like, well, you know, it's my job. <laughs> so I'm, I'm extremely honored, but I also just want everybody to know that it's a job that I really love to do. And um, it's nice to be awarded uh, something for doing it, but it's, it's what I love to do. I don't say just for young people, but I say for um, anybody, for anybody, old, young. We, at the pantry, we will take kids of just about any age, but it's better if they're at least seven or eight years old. You get them started young, get them to know what it's like to help people. And that is the most important thing. That's my advice, go out, no matter what you like to do, if it isn't feeding people, it's helping other people. It's just really important that you do it. That's the interesting thing about the pantry uh, and always has been since we started. Um, you have the people who need the food and come to the food pantry. They're of an economic level, you know, way down there. And then they're the people who volunteer, which are, you know, they're comfortable, most of them. Some of them actually really do come to the food pantry. I mean, they, they are clients, but they do volunteer. So you've got a middle level. And then you have the very generous people of the county who donate to keep the food pantry up and running. And that has from day one been amazing. That support that we've had from the community. And they that support comes from the people who've always been here and the people who have come here over the years. And so we have that combination of things. That is one of the special things about the people of Rappahannock. They really are wonderful and very generous. And during the pandemic, it just blossomed. In fact, I have to tell a story um, about a gentleman that came in. This was, oh, maybe the pan, let's see, the pandemic started in March and maybe he came in in May or June. And he walked up, walked, came in, stood in front of my desk and he had a cowboy hat on. And I said, hello, how, how are you? Welcome to the pantry. He said, ma'am, I was watching Willie Nelson on the television last night and he was in Texas and he was telling everybody that they needed to vo volunteer or give money to their local food pantry. So I'm giving you money for my local food pantry. And he gave me a hundred dollars. And it was, we'd never seen him before. You know, will we see him again? Um, and it, we've just had $20 here, $50 there, $100. Um, so we've had just some amazing people that have done fantastic things for us during the pandemic and some fabulous foundations also doing really well. I mean, helping us a lot. If I can say the thing that I miss most about the pandemic and all of my clients and all my volunteers and all the donors and everybody's going to know, I miss hugging people. I've, I've worked in places where they called me the mad hugger 
because I just like to hug people. And it's hard to not be able to hug the people when they need it. We had people crying the other day. I mean, it's just been a terrible thing that's happened. And um, you can't hug them. You know, you really can't hug them. And you have volunteers that have personal issues and deaths in the family. And that's really hard. To, that, that and the fact that I haven't been able to wear lipstick for a year. Congratulations, Mimi. She is a character. I love that saucy, bossy pants. I mean, and yes. she just says it so tongue in cheek. I mean, let me tell you, we had the opportunity to film Mimi out at her house at Lilac Farm, wow. which is just beautiful and beautiful gardens and all the lilac colors everywhere. And her house is painted lilac. And um, one thing that I really did not understand when I got there, and afterwards she said, you've got to come and see this. Well, I put my mask on, and she showed me inside her house. And she has traveled all over the world. I think she's lived in France, and, you know, she's traveled all over. She collects artwork, paintings. Wow. And at her house, at Mimi's house, the the walls in her home are covered from floor to ceiling with these amazing paintings but not only that there's a story that goes along with every painting and how she obtained that painting i could have stayed there all day i mean it was just phenomenal and um, you know, she's been described as like the, the heartbeat of Rappahannock County, and you can see why, you know. Well, she is the heartbeat of Rappahannock County. I had the pleasure of meeting Mimi a handful of years ago when I worked in Rappahannock County. Now, it's only there for a short stint, but it didn't take me long to learn who Mimi was. And I had the pleasure of being able to go out and visit her uh, at the pantry in the oh. middle of uh, her operational day. And let me tell you, what an amazing woman and what an amazing operation she has there. And when she was talking about hugging, I could just, I was thinking back to my visit and how people came through that door and looked to her for emotional support, just that hello and how are you, and she seemed oh. to know everybody by name, and they all certainly knew her. So she just has such a great uh, uh, positive impact, but um, also influence on making sure folks are taken care of, which is mm -hmm. kind of our theme tonight, it helping really to take is. care of each other and yeah. watching out for others in your community. So me and, is certainly a and testament. And that, that strength in the community that's yes. coming from all of these, these kinds of gestures and people and that Absolutely. community strength that, that yep. comes forth. It's, yeah, well, congratulations again, Mimi. Just really fantastic. Um, it's not too late to make a contribution. You can visit the Aging Together website at agingtogether.org. Please do or have a look and see what programs are up and coming that you might be interested in. And as we say goodbye this evening, our program continues. Don't go away. Please stay with us. We have um, a, a brief collage of the awards presentation, okay? And we, it, we really love you to see, stay with us and watch the honorees receiving their awards. And uh, don't forget to visit the website, agingtogether.org. We wanna make sure you've got that down. Congratulations again to everybody. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors, everyone who sent in a tribute, Culpepper Media, Johnny and Nicole, oh my God, you guys are great. Lisa Peacock, our board of directors, and my do new partner for the dog and pony show, <laughs> Crystal Hale. Well, thank you for having me here, and it's an honor. It's always been an honor just to be able to be on the board of directors, but to be here tonight 
and have a, an active part in helping to um, say thank you and congratulations to all of the honorees tonight has been a, a real um, special moment for me, Ellen. So thank you. And again, congratulations to everyone. And thanks for your selfless and endless work to help your communities. And thanks again to everyone who uh, may consider donating to Aging Together. And we really appreciate that. We certainly can use it to help keep our programs going. So I hope everyone has a wonderful night. I'm gonna jump in and just say one last thing if it's not too late. And that is please, viewers, awardees, introducers, be thinking about next year. Do you know somebody in your community that is deserving of this award. We really want you to keep your eyes out and let us know, and we will be in touch with that application process. But uh, we can't do this without you, so thank you.